Video Lesson 5 tonight is about mixtures and solutions, and it's going to help prepare you for our upcoming labs this week, this week where we're going to look at the separation of different mixtures and solutions by filtration, evaporation, and chromatography. My objectives for tonight for you and uh, over this coming week here is that you'll be able to compare and contrast heterogeneous mixtures uh, to homogeneous mixtures. You will also be able to apply the filtration, distillation, and evaporation techniques that we're going to learn in the lab um, to solving our unit problem. To begin with tonight, you should have already uh, gone ahead and done the pre-video work, uh, which is pre-rating your vocabulary in your notebook. And so we're going to start off with what, a, what exactly is a mixture. And so mixtures is a physical blend of two or more components. Uh, most matter that you interact with on a daily basis is considered a mixture. And mixtures can be identified as heterogeneous or homogeneous. So some examples of a mixture here would be like this fork here, or a glass, or even salad dressing, or the air that you are breathing. A heterogeneous mixture is where the composition is not uniform throughout. And so you can see that in the two pictures on this page here, where I've got a container of mixed nuts uh, that you can see each of the individual types of pasta and nuts that are there. And then also a container of Crayola crayons would be considered a heterogeneous mixture. So indiv individual components can often be seen in heterogeneous mixtures. As I said before here, if we use, for example, Italian dressing here, um, you can see the oil but all of the seasoning is suspended within that oil uh, along with other flavorings. And so you can see the individual components that make up an Italian dressing. Another way to look at this is if I took uh, some olive oil here and I pour it into this glass here. The olive oil, we can't tell that there's anything different about it. It just looks all the same. But if I were to go ahead and add vinegar to this, the vinegar is going to separate into its own mixture here. And no matter how much I mix it up, it's not going to be the same throughout. You can still see the individual components. This is a heterogeneous mixture. The other form of mixtures, which you deal more often with here, is what's referred to as a homogeneous mixture. And the composition is going to be uniform throughout. It's also referred to as a solution. And solutions can be more than just liquids. They can be solids and gases, too. So the picture here, the Kool-Aid man, uh, that is an example of a homogeneous mixture there. Uh, when you make Kool-Aid, it's the same throughout, uh, as long as you get all the sugar dissolved within the Kool-Aid. In the lab, we're going to deal with a lot of homogeneous mixtures, but we're all, and also heterogeneous mixtures, but the picture here shows uh, four examples of homogeneous mixtures there. They're the same throughout. And if I were to take another example here, so I have a glass of water, and right now this is a homogeneous mixture because in addition to water, it's got uh, dissolved metals and non-metals in it, um, such as salt uh, or chlorine. And if I were to take one of these uh, flavor mixins here, now, right now, it's considered a heterogeneous mixture here. But if I were to stir this up, Once I stir this up, it becomes a homogeneous mixture. You can't tell the difference between the orange flavoring there and the water itself. When we talk about heterogeneous and homogeneous solutions or mixtures, we also need to talk about phases. And phases return to the different parts of a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture that are vis visible. So for example here, this picture of M&Ms there, I have red, yellow, blue, orange, green, and brown present. Each of those is a different phase. We can see that they're separate from the other 
M&Ms. A homogeneous mixture or solution will only have one phase because it looks the same throughout. Uh, a heterogeneous mixture is going to have two or more phases to it. Now when we talk about mixtures and solutions here, what I'm really interested in us knowing in the lab is how can we go about separating mixtures from each other. And we can generally use the physical properties of the different components to separate out the mixture. So for example, you could take the freezing and melting point differences between uh, two parts of a mixture uh, to separate out the individual components, or possibly magnetism or the density of the individual component here. If we go back to my glass of olive oil here and vinegar, what's happened is because the vinegar is more dense, it's separated and it's, it's sitting on the bottom now. The olive oil is less dense, so it sits on top. We could now separate this mixture out by pouring off the olive oil uh, to get just the vinegar. Additional methods for separating out mixtures is by physical means of separation based on the size of the solid or liquid phases. Um, and that's through filtration. So in your car, you have an air filter that takes the air that's coming into the engine and the rest of your vehicle there. And the small particles that are suspended in the air that would be detrimental to the overall well-being of your engine get uh, separated by a filter. If you make pasta at home, you also have a colander here that's going to separate the solids and allow the liquid to go through. And it's just based on the size of the particle. In the lab later this week, we're going to be doing a filtration lab where we're going to separate out uh, two different um, phases of a homogeneous uh, or heterogeneous mixture. Another method to separate out uh, different mixtures is the process of distillation. So if you've ever had a bottle of distilled water, this is what they're doing here. And what they're doing is they're taking a solution or mixture and they're heating it up to the point where the liquid is going to boil and become a vapor and you're going to be able to separate them. And the way they do that is the vapor leaves the, the initial container and goes through a cooled uh, line of tubing there and it's going to condense and be collected in a, a container uh, without the suspended solids. A method that we're going to use in the lab this week here is referred to as evaporation and similar to distillation in that you're going to heat up the solution or mixture. But instead of collecting the liquid phase for this, what we're going to do is we're going to dissolve something in, the, in water or in ethanol. We're going to heat that up to boil off the liquid phase and collect the solid material. And that's all we have for tonight's video.